Royal Caribbean's Marin of the Seas underwent a $100 million plus royal amplification back in 2018. We just set sail on this updated ship and want to share everything with you as we go deck by deck in our exclusive Marin of the Seas cruise ship tour, brand new for 2022, up next. Welcome aboard, cruisers. I'm DB from Eat Sleep Cruise, where we help you see the world one port at a time. And if you're a subscriber to this channel or follow us anywhere on social media, you know that we are big Royal Caribbean fans. And even though we sailed on Marin of the Seas when the ship was recently updated in 2018, we were very excited to get back on board the ship this year, given we've sailed on several ships that have also been amplified, including Navigator of the Seas and Oasis of the Seas. And we were really interested to see if the updates to Marin of the Seas still had that royal wow factor. Now, like we do for all our cruise ship tours, we're gonna start at the very top of the ship, working our way down deck by deck, exploring all the public venues on Mariner of the Seas. Of course, if you have any questions at all about the ship, Royal Caribbean, or just cruising in general, please leave them in the comment section below and we'll be happy to answer them. So we're gonna start all the way on top of the ship on deck 15 midship at the observatorium. Well, actually the observatorium is really the puzzle break center on Mariner of the Seas. This room can be accessed from a flight of stairs within the Viking Crown Lounge. This escape room experience is an upcharge and reservations are required. The observatorium is where you'll need to work together to solve puzzles and find clues before time runs out. And it's a great activity for groups of family and friends. Heading down a deck on deck 14, you'll find Ellington's, which is also located in the Viking Crown Lounge. This is also referred to as the Jazz Club. Offering stunning views, this venue is a quiet space to relax during the day. At night, Ellington's turns on the party vibe with the Hush Silent Party and the nightclub with DJ spinning hits on several nights of your cruise. This is one of the late night spots on Marin the Seas. Of course, there's also a full bar serving up all your favorite beverages while you get your groove on. Located within the same area is the Diamond Club. This exclusive venue is open to Royal Caribbean's Crown and Anchor Society members with diamond and above status. This lounge is a place to congregate with like-minded loyal royals and grab some drinks and snacks throughout the day. However, with the changes to the Crown and Anchor benefits, drink vouchers can be used anywhere on the ship. So you don't have to visit this lounge if you don't want to, to take advantage of the Diamond Cocktail Hour benefit. Finally, in the Viking Crown Lounge, you'll find the Suite Lounge. This exclusive venue is open to guests staying in Grand Suites and above and features complimentary snacks throughout the day and cocktails for a few hours in the evening. There is also an exclusive outdoor deck area for the suite lounge. Heading down to deck 13, all the way forward, you'll find the Mariner Dunes. This island themed mini golf is a great complimentary and family friendly activity. Line up your shot and putt your way to victory on this nine hole course. Also located in this forward deck area are several lounge chairs. During our cruise, which was quite full, this forward deck area wasn't all that busy. On the complete other end of Marina Seas on deck 13 is the sports deck, which is home to several different activities including some signature Royal Caribbean attractions. Of course, there is a sports court, which is an open court that hosts several competitions and free play hours during the cruise. From basketball to pickleball, soccer, and beanbag toss, 
and even Zumba and archery, you're sure to find an activity you can enjoy. Located nearby, there's also a few table tennis games. Right above the court is the rock climbing wall. This is another great activity to test your agility and burn some calories. One unique feature that was added to Mariner of the Seas during the amplification is the sky pad. Found on only a few ships in the Royal Caribbean fleet, the sky pad is an interactive bungee trampoline experience. During your session, you will bounce up and down on a trampoline while being aided by a hydraulic system, allowing you to reach new heights. Cruisers of a certain age will also have the option for a virtual reality headset. These headsets include different games that align with your movements to make you feel like you're immersed in an out of this world virtual adventure. Located on the starboard side of the ship, near the sky pad, is the Sky Climber. This jungle gym of sorts is really designed for little kids and is surrounded by a net, which allows your kids to climb until their hearts are content while you have some peace of mind knowing they are safe. While the younger kids are enjoying the Sky Climber, adults can pull up a seat and relax for a bit with the swings and hammocks right next door. Heading to the port side of the sports deck, you'll find the duo of water slides known as the Perfect Storm. Again, these water slides were added to the ship back in 2018. These dual racer water slides are sure to provide some wet and wild fun during those hot Caribbean days on Mariner of the Seas. Finally, all the way up on deck 13, you'll find the Royal Caribbean sports deck staple, the Flow Rider. This surf simulator offers sessions for all skill levels, so be sure to check the cruise compass for details and the hours of operation. You can partake in some boogie boarding, mixed wave sessions, or advanced stand-up surfing. So whether you've experienced a flow rider in the past or never been on before, your next cruise on Merit of the Seas is the perfect time to give it a try. Heading down to deck 12, all the way forward, you'll find the spa. This area is surrounded by some panoramic ocean view staterooms, which were new to the ship during the amplification. Like most cruise ship spas, on Mariner of the Seas, you can book massages, facials, and other beauty treatments for additional costs. There's also a hair salon in the spa. Unfortunately though, the ship does not feature a thermal suite. Heading outside on deck 12, you'll find the Sky Lounge. This outdoor bar overlooks all the action of the pool deck. With some comfy chairs and ideal people watching location, this is your outdoor lounge. Catch some sun with a cocktail in your hand. Featuring the pool bar menu, this venue allows you to still enjoy all the sights and sounds of the pool deck without being in the middle of the crowds. Additionally, there are cascading seats reserved for suite guests located on both sides of the Sky Lounge. Of course, there are plenty of loungers circling this sun deck, overlooking all the pool deck fun as well. This might be the perfect viewing spot for some of the popular sea day activities, like the belly flop contest or the sexiest man competition. Encircling this outdoor midship area is the jogging track. It takes eight laps around this track to equal one mile. Do be aware that this area becomes congested during peak times, as those looking to use the jogging track for fitness also need to share it with others just walking around the pool deck. And you will need to dodge sun loungers on both sides of the track with other cruisers that are looking to get their tan on. Heading further aft and back indoors, you will find the arcade and Adventure Ocean. Actually, to get to the main area of Venture Ocean, you have to walk right through the arcade. The arcade features games like air hockey, skee ball, and other classic arcade games, though these games will cost you extra money. If you're able to survive walking through the arcade without spending anything, you'll arrive to the main area of Adventure Ocean. Included in your cruise fare on Royal Caribbean ships are youth programs. Adventure Ocean allows your kids to engage in educational and fun activities during the cruise that are age appropriate. With varying age groups, your little ones will be supervised by trained staff as they participate in various edutainment offerings. Even if you don't think your kids will be interested in using Adventure Ocean, we always recommend that you register them for this program on the first day of the cruise. 
There are separate rooms for the Royal Babies and Royal Tots playgroups at Adventure Ocean for ages 6 months to 36 months. Children ages 3 to 5 can enjoy science experiments, dino-sized secrets, and more engaging entertainment in the Aquanauts room. In the Explorer's room, children 6 to 8 years old are entertained with activities like theme parties and more. The Voyagers group at Adventure Ocean offers endless ways for kids aged 9 to 12 to play. They can stroke their competitive spirit at sports tournaments and video game showdowns, or join in a scavenger hunt around the ship. And finally, teens on Royal Caribbean ships have their own dedicated space too. Finally, on the starboard side of Deck 12, you'll find Johnny Rockets. Those back on land will recognize this 1950s inspired shop. The American Classic Diner serves up fresh burgers and sandwiches with a side of fries and milkshakes. This venue is an upcharge and is open select hours of your cruise. Surprisingly, during our cruise, Giant Rockers was only open during the day, normally from around 11 or 12 to about 6 p.m. Deck 11 is home to many onboard amenities and venues. All the way forward, there's the fitness set. This gym offers all your typical workout equipment with plenty of cardio machines, strength training equipment, free weights, and more. There's also a separate aerobics room which hosts spin classes as well as group fitness classes. The fitness center offers complimentary morning stretch and a variety of other four fee classes like yoga, spin, plates, and more. Immediately following the fitness center, you'll find the Solarium. The Solarium is your adults only retreat on Royal Caribbean cruise ships. Unlike some other ships in the fleet, this Solarium on Mariner Seas has an open air area above the pool with most of the loungers protected as they are covered from the deck above. At the Solarium, you'll also find the Solarium Bar, which serves a typical pool bar menu. Two whirlpools and plenty of comfy lounge furniture. The Solarium is a great place to relax away from the hustle and bustle of the outdoor main pool area. Once you exit the protected Solarium, you are now on the main pool deck area. Located forward on this deck, right below the Sky Lounge, is the aptly named Pool Bar. This bar is a place to be during the day. You can grab a pina colada and get ready for the day's events while lounging poolside. Now, unlike other amplified ships in Royal Caribbean's fleet, this pool bar has not been updated to the lime and coconut. Thus, the pool bar menu does not include the signature lime and coconut cocktail found on newer ships. Still, there are plenty of other great drinks to go around, including the watermelon margarita and the sangria. The highlight of any cruise ship's outdoor decks is the pool deck. Located in the center of deck 11, you'll find two pools, four whirlpools, and plenty of loungers on Mare of the Seas. During the day, there are movies which can be viewed on the large movie screen above the pools and friendly competitions like the Sexiest Man Contest or the Belly Flop Contest. In the evenings, there are parties like Dancing Under the Stars, as well as additional movies. If you get hungry while lounging poolside, there are a few options for snacks located nearby. On the starboard side, you'll find the popular Arctic Zone soft serve ice cream station. During our cruise, staff was serving individuals ice cream. One tip we have is to get a cup from the Windjammer and ask them to fill the cup with ice cream. While the wife likes her ice cream, I'm more a fan of the Boardwalk Doghouse. Located on the port side, this complimentary venue serves up several different dogs. During our cruise, the Boardwalk Doghouse was open daily from around 11.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. This might just be the perfect midday snack while lounging by the pool or after returning to the ship from a day ashore. Aft on Deck 11, you can find Mariner of the Seas 
casual restaurant, the Windjammer. If you cruised on Royal Caribbean before, then you're very familiar with this venue. This casual complimentary buffet is open most of the day. On both sea and port days, the Windjammer serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner. For breakfast, which on our cruise was approximately from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. in the morning, you can find your typical selections, including fruits, breakfast pastries, cereals, and a host of hot meals, such as scrambled eggs, bacon, and sausage. For lunch, which was approximately 11.30 a.m. to 3 p.m., you'll find a selection of salads, cold cuts and sandwiches, a grill with hamburgers and hot dogs, and other hot dishes, which vary slightly during the cruise. Now we ate at the Windjammer a couple times for breakfast and a couple times for lunch. And compared to our previous experiences with Royal Caribbean, we would say this Windjammer was on par with other ships in the fleet, although we did think the selections were a little bit more limited when compared to some of the other cruises we've been on in the past year. Now the Windjammer is also open for dinner, which for our cruise was from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. and offers different theme nights, including American classics, Italian, Mexican, Caribbean, and flavors of India. Of course, you'll also find your standard buffet selections in addition to the themed offerings at dinner. Inside the Windjammer, you'll find the Plaza Bar. If you're dining at the Windjammer or one of the adjacent specialty restaurants, you can grab a pre-dinner drink at this venue. This bar also serves as the main watering hole for those dining in the Windjammer during meal times. This bar is located at the front of the Windjammer and offers a wide variety of liquors, beers, and wines. Similar to other ships in the Voyager class, Marin of the Seas has two specialty restaurants that are located in the Windjammer on Deck 11. On the port side is Royal Caribbean's signature steakhouse, Chops Grill. For those meat lovers out there, a dinner at Chops Grill is a must. The specialty restaurant currently has an upcharge of $59 on Marin of the Seas. You can make reservations at Chops Grill prior to your cruise using the cruise planner on Royal Caribbean's website, or you can make reservations once on board the ship, but do know that prime dinner times do fill out quickly. Chops Grill is open every night of the cruise from 5.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. The restaurant is also open for select days for lunch with a reduced menu and lower price tag. We dined at Chops Grill on the second night of our cruise, and while the service was slow, the food was fantastic. Among the standouts were the filet and the cheesecake. Across the way on the starboard side is Jamie's Italian by celebrity chef Jamie Oliver. Jamie's Italian is open nightly for dinner from 5.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. and on select days for lunch as well. This specialty restaurant serves up Italian classics in a casual setting with menu options including the famous meat plank, fresh made pasta, short rib, lemon meringue cheesecake, and more. The current upcharge for dinner is $50 per person. Again, you can make reservations to this restaurant pre-cruise using the online cruise planner or try to reserve a spot once on board the ship. Decks 10 through 6 are all staterooms. For this Mariner of the Seas cruise, we stayed in cabin 8666. The spacious ocean view balcony cabin is located rather aft on the port side of the ship. Unlike some other ships, the cabins on Mare of the Seas did not receive many updates during its previous amplification. This room still had the older green and gold color palette and did feel a bit dated. Still, the room felt more spacious than some of the other recent balcony cabins we've stayed in. There was ample storage between the closet and vanity area. There was also a very large sofa in the cabin. The size of the balcony and the bathroom were both on par with the typical cruise cabins as well. Overall, this stateroom was more than adequate for our five-day sailing on Mare of the Seas. All the way forward on Deck 5 is the Star Lounge. The Star Lounge is home to game shows, trivia, karaoke, and bingo, hosted by the cruise director staff. Some of our favorites that occurred in the Star Lounge during our cruise were Majority Rules, Finish That Lyric, and The Battle of the Sexes.
Nearby the Star Lounge, you'll find a small library. Honestly, on Mario of the Seas, the library was quite sparse, with a few old beat up board games and a rather dingy collection of old books. The library was open most of the day, every day of the cruise. So if you bring your own board games and make some new friends, this is a great place to hang out and escape the heat. After the Star Lounge is really the heart of the ship where most of the indoor bars, lounges, and shops are located on the Royal Promenade. First up, on the port side, is the newly popular Playmakers Sports Bar and Arcade. Playmakers is a great spot for all the sports lovers out there. Several televisions line the sports bar, broadcasting games from around the world. There's also pool table, retro arcade games, and a foosball table here. During our cruise, we're able to watch the NBA championship game. When it comes to food and drinks, Playmakers features an a la carte food menu, including fan favorites like nachos, chicken wings, and an onion ring tower. The venue also serves an extensive beer menu, meaning you'll always have a drink ready to cheer on your home team, and has some signature drinks as well. Across the way from Playmakers is Cafe Promenade on the starboard side of the ship. Open 24 hours a day, the Cafe Promenade is your go-to spot for snacks any time of day. The venue serves up breakfast pastries, sandwiches, and small desserts meaning you'll never go hungry on Mare of the Seats. Since there's no standalone pizza shop on the ship, Cafe Promenade also serves up pizza until the wee hours of the morning. This venue is a great place to grab a table and people watch as there's always something happening in the Royal Promenade. Like most Royal Caribbean ships, specialty coffee is available at Cafe Promenade as well. These espresso-based drinks are included in the deluxe beverage package or the Cafe Select coffee card. Adjacent to the Cafe Promenade is Ben & Jerry's Ice Cream. Serving up your favorite flavors at sea, purchases at Ben & Jerry are an upcharge, but you can still get complimentary soft serve ice cream as we mentioned at the Arctic Zone in the pool deck. But if you're looking for one of those Ben & Jerry's signature flavors or a custom milkshake, this is your spot. Continuing aft on the Royal Promenade, on the port side following Playmakers, you'll find the Barnacle and Barrel this English style pub is a fan favorite on Royal Caribbean ships. New pub name, same great pub feeling and menu. The Barnacle and Barrel features a variety of lagers, stouts, and ales, so you're sure to find a brew for you. In addition, the pub features live acoustic guitar music most evenings, so you can sing along with their popular songs and enjoy a beer on the Royal Promenade. During our sailing, we really enjoyed the wonderful performances by Darla Fox in the pub. On the other side of the Royal Promenade is another bar, which personally is my favorite in the Royal Caribbean fleet, the Bamboo Room. This Polynesian inspired tiki bar is funky and fun with a drink menu that is exotic as a decor. Open most days starting the mid-afternoon, the Bamboo Room specialty menu shows up some new favorites like the Royal Zombie and the On the Run. The menu also features a full a la carte food offerings like pulled pork sliders and tuna pokey. Even though some of the drinks are a few dollars above the Royal Caribbean drink package, the Bamboo Room might just become your favorite new Royal Caribbean bar. Located throughout the promenade, you'll find a number of different shops. From your traditional logo shop, which is on the port side, selling t-shirts and other Royal Caribbean merchandise, to shops with watches, jewelry, and other duty-free merchandise, there's nothing wrong with bringing home a few souvenirs from your Mariner of the Seas cruise. Continuing after the Royal Promenade, you'll find the next cruise, shore excursions, and guest services located in the atrium on Deck 5. Next cruise in the shore excursions desk are on the port side. You'll want to visit the next cruise desk if you're thinking of booking another cruise while on board Mar of the Seas. Oftentimes, you can score exclusive rates and additional perks for booking on board your current cruise. While we highly suggest booking shore excursions pre-cruise, you'll want to visit the shore excursions desk if you need information about tours or assistance booking any shore excursions during your cruise. While the tablets are always open, the shore excursions desk is manned by shore excursion staff select hours of your cruise. Make sure to check the cruise compass or the app for the hours of operation. 
One venue that always has help is guest services. On Mariner Seas, guest services is located on the starboard side aft on deck five. The team at guest services is available to answer all of your questions. Whether you have an issue with your bill or need a new CPAS card, this is your go-to spot for all your questions and concerns. Lastly, all the way aft on deck five, four, and three, you'll find the main dining room. This complimentary venue serves upscale multi-course meals each evening. During our cruise, deck three was reserved for guests with my time dining, while decks four and five of the main dining room were reserved for guests with traditional dining. At Merit of the Seas, the early seating for traditional dining was 5.30 and the late seating was 8 p.m. My time dining opened at 6.45 p.m. And pre-cruise, cruisers were allowed to reserve my time dining each night, with the earliest reservation available pre-cruise being 7 p.m. Regardless of what deck you're on or whether you opt for traditional dining or my time dining, the dinner menus are exactly the same in the main dining room. These options do rotate each evening. Some of our favorite dishes include the short rib, lamb shank, and the turkey dinner on the last night of our cruise. On our five-night sailing, there was one formal night, which occurred on day two. However, there was no lobster night on the shorter sailing. During our cruise, the main dining room also served sit-down breakfast daily and lunch on sea days. These meals took place on deck three. Given the short itinerary, and two days at Royal Caribbean's private islands, we did not eat in the main dining room for breakfast or lunch, but we did eat dinner there four nights of the cruise. And we'd like to give a shout out to our awesome wait staff of Geronimo and Cerrone. Outside on deck four, you'll find an outside promenade space. This covered outdoor area includes chairs and some shuffleboard. You are able to walk all around this space and it's a nice escape on a sea day from the crowded pool deck. Now, if you walk all the way forward on this outdoor deck, you actually get to Mariner of the Seas helipad. One feature of Royal Caribbean's Voyager class of ships is that cruisers are able to access the helipad all the way forward. On Mariner of the Seas, there's actually even some benches set up there so cruisers can watch, sail in the ports, or just relax out there as the ship is sailing to the next destination. Heading down to deck four, you'll find the popular schooner bar on the starboard side of the ship. The schooner bar is Royal Caribbean's signature piano bar and is a favorite on any ship. This venue boasts a specialty drink menu, martinis including our personal favorites, the sidecar and lavender daiquiri. Located right in front of the theater, this makes for a great stop before or after the nightly performances. The Schooner Bar also regularly hosts trivia and live piano music in the evenings that should not be missed. We particularly enjoyed Nathan Franco during our recent sailing on Marin of the Seas. Located right across from the Schooner Bar on the port side is another specialty restaurant, Azumi Hibachi and Sushi on Deck 4. This Royal Caribbean fan favorite offers Asian-inspired teppanyaki, sushi, and other Far East flavors. The hibachi experience has a flat fee for the four-course meal. At Azumi Sushi, guests can pay a la carte or select the prefix meal option, which includes one small plate, two large plates, and a dessert. Azumi is open nightly for dinner from 5.30 to 9.30 p.m. and on select days for lunch. But make sure to make your reservations early, as this was one restaurant that was quite busy every night of our cruise. Next up on this Mariner Seas ship tour is the Casino Royale. If you like to gamble, well, this is your spot. Open whenever the ship is not docked at a port of call, Casino Royale features all your favorite table games and slot machines. On Mariner the Seas, Casino Royale is one of the only indoor venues in which you are able to smoke. If you need a beverage to go along with your gameplay, there's also the casino bar. Even if you don't like to gamble, getting a drink at the casino bar is a safe bet, as this is one of the only late night bars on the ship. Exiting the casino, heading aft, you'll find Boleros on the port side. This Latin inspired bar is another staple on Royal Caribbean cruise ships, boasting a signature cocktail menu featuring daiquiris and other rum based drinks you might feel like you're back in Miami in Little Havana. 
During our sailing, the venue's musical offerings rotated between a Latin duo and a rock band. Unfortunately, neither of the music acts in Boleros measured up to either the pub performer or the Scunabara piano player, in our opinion. Across from Boleros on the starboard side is Starbucks. Just like the popular coffee shop on land, Mirror of the Seas has its own Starbucks, serving up all your favorite drinks. From lattes to iced teas, and even frappuccinos, your handcrafted beverage awaits you. However, they will cost you extra money. Beverages at Starbucks are priced a la carte and are not included in the deluxe beverage package or the Cafe Select coffee cart. Deck three forward, you'll find the main entrance to the Royal Theater. With seating located on both deck three and four, this is the ship's main theater, which hosts nightly entertainment, including production shows and headliner entertainers. During our cruise, the Royal Theater also hosted other activities, like the Love and Marriage show, movies, adult comedy shows, and more. The two production shows during our sailing were Center Stage and Gallery of Dreams. Unfortunately, these performances did not live up to our high expectations for Royal Caribbean Entertainment. During the show, if you want to enjoy a refreshing drink, there are also two bars located at the back of the theater on Deck 3, although before the performances, there were a number of bar servers walking around taking drink orders as well. In the center of Deck 3, you'll find Studio B. Studio B is another popular entertainment space on Royal Caribbean cruise ships. Only accessible using the aft elevators and staircase, Studio B is your ice skating rink at sea. This venue is home to the signature ice show, Ice Under the Big Top. In Studio B, there are bars on both sides of the venue, so be sure to get your drinks ahead of time as service is limited during showtime. The venue also hosts free skate sessions and laser tag at designated times throughout the cruise. These activities are complimentary and family friendly. Further, no experience is required, but do show up early. Cues for both of these activities during our cruise formed early with some hefty wait times. Located immediately outside Studio B is the art gallery and the Focus photo gallery. At the art gallery, you can view various artworks that you might want to purchase during the cruise's art auctions. At the photo gallery, you can also view and purchase your photos taken during the cruise using digital kiosks. Of course, there's also staff members on hand to assist and answer any questions you have at the photo gallery. Lastly, we're down to deck two where you'll find the Loyalty Ambassador Desk. For those that have questions about their Crown and Anchor status, you can head to the Loyalty Ambassador Desk, select hours of your cruise to talk to the knowledgeable ambassador about the Crown and Anchor Society. Lastly, midship on deck two, you'll find the Conference Center. You can only access the Conference Center using the forward staircase and forward elevators. Here, there are several rooms that individuals can rent for private functions, such as family gatherings or other meetings for large groups. And there you have it. That's our exclusive Marin of the Seas cruise ship tour. But of course, we'd love to hear from you. Have you sailed on Marin of the Seas? What's your favorite venue on a Royal Caribbean ship? Let us know your experiences sailing with RCI in the comment section below. I'm DB from Eat Sleep Cruise, and if you like this video, we have tons of other cruise ship tours, cruise reviews, and cruise tip videos right here on the channel. If you're not sure where to start, I highly suggest you check out our exclusive Wonder of the Seas cruise ship tour right here on YouTube. Just like this video, we go deck by deck showing you all the public spaces, including all the restaurants, the pool area, entertainment venues, and more as we explore every square inch of the world's largest cruise ship, Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas.